TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, this is, I was about to say this is the second channel, I'm tweaking. This is the first channel. <laughs> this behind me though, if you miss any of the lives on YouTube or on, on, on Twitch, and you just want to see the shorts or the little stories that I'll be talking about. I'll be this is the shorts, the videos that are not posted on YouTube or on the second channel. They make it here or whatever. I do not run this channel. Somebody from the UK runs this channel, or they make everything for this channel. So salute to them, man. Or you know, my it's my I made the channel, but they run it. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, don't forget, man, we do got the Patreon. This is everything on the Patreon. This is not everything, but there's a list. Once you go to my Patreon, you click about, and you can see the everything that's on there. This is what's currently on there. I'm watching This is England right after this video. Um, let's just get to this, man. This is the Taboo Room. I really like the Taboo Room. Um, they just don't make it difficult. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Peckham gang member convicted of murder sentenced to 22 years. Young Rev. Warning. In January 2011, a man named Daniel Graham was stabbed 24 times in 45 seconds. Dang, he had a switch on that one? My bad. Uh, in South London. This is a serious subject. The judge concluded his life was taken under horrific and merciless circumstances. Sounds about right by a group of men. However, a man was wrongfully, oh, wrongfully convicted. It took three trials and a, and a hung jury to get the right verdict. What's a hung jury? Ver, ju, what's a hung jury? I don't know what that is. Rev is now home and here to tell you about the events that took place that changed his life forever. Okay. Talk about it, Rev. Grew up in Peckham. I was convicted of murder, given a prison sentence of 22 years. I later on appealed that conviction and got it quashed. I then released on my third trial. And now I'm back, and this is my story. Boy, born and raised in Peckham, get me, um, child was, childhood was good, get me. Raised by a single mum. Dad was in and out, but yeah, good childhood. And Ro, I'm just gonna ask straight away, how did you get into the gang life? Um, just from, you know, growing up, people around you, you know, like playing out. It starts with playing out at first, isn't it? Checking friends, friends from school, and just everyone's from the same area. So it's like, yeah. How was you introduced? Or was you, well, when was the first day you say you became a part of a gang? It's not like, yeah, we're in a gang now, isn't it? You just... And remember, man, I'm not here to glorify or sensationalize anything. I'm just here, you know, like y'all here watching it. And reacting. Like I said, the people you're around, innit? And he, you know, obviously from Peckham, so I'm hanging out with people from Peckham. You know what I'm trying to say? Seeing the older... You was in the ends. You was in there. Lot, chilling with the older lot. So yeah, it's just like, do things they do, you look up to them and just things like that. Rev, I want you to tell me about the story that I guess changed your life forever. Mm. So what happened, I guess? Well, what, what was the incident that took place? Um, someone got stabbed, um, I think it was 24 times and passed away, yeah. And how was allegedly you are meant to be connected to such crime? Mm. Hey, hold on, man, because I don't trust it. Mm. I'm going to throw that up there real quick. Then we back in time. Allegedly, I was picked out in the ID parade, innit? That's what pinpointed me to this crime, you hear me? So... I was picked out in the ID parade, and from then, yeah, police picked up on me and just, yeah, done the investigation. So, this, this guy got murdered, and was it a case of days later you were just arrested randomly? Um, when's it? Jan it happened in January. When was I arrested? Yeah, I think I was arrested like a month after or something, get me. But I wasn't charged straight away. I was bailed until like June. June they come for me, and then they charged me in June. And what was your initial reaction? I was shocked, you get me? Like, what the f you get me? Like, what's going on? You get me? And, the, uh, and then, Rev, what was next for you? So you've been charged, what did I do? 
Um, charged basically in June, remanded straight away, took me to Brixton. And then, yeah, from Brixton, that's when my trial just, not even my trial, but that's when the process started happening, you get me? So just tell me how, how the case started. And so basically, when I got nicked, um, like I said, I was on bail till like June. Side note, bro look like he can rap. Young Rev. That sounds like a rap name too. He look like a rapper. June, I had to go to, um, what was it, Sutton Police Station like, every month, you get me, and sign on. And then one day, randomly, they just come for me. You get me, I heard some rattling, rattling, banging. Thinking, what's that? You get me, my mum said, oh, there's peace outside. I'm thinking, oh, what do they want, man? You get me, like, what's going on? I ain't got a sign on today or nothing. So they've come, come in my room now, saying, yeah, you've been charged with murder. They took me from my house, and I went Campbell, Campbell Green Magistrates Court, from my house straight to court. Dang. So basically... They was already ready. They had all the evidence. They had everything ready to go. You went from the crib to trial? That's different. Come in the courtroom now, and that's the same courtroom that my mum was working in. You get me? So they've took me to the courtroom that my mum was in, basically, in there. And she's had to, like, give the judge my files and call out my name for me to come up. So, yeah, and from then... That's brutal. Was that planned, y'all think? Assalamu alaikum. If you're sick and tired of the 95 grind... That sounded like it was planned. Yeah. Was anyone aware in the in, in the court that it was your mum who was handing the papers? Yeah, obviously the police officers, innit? Because they took me from my house, see my mum. So they they originally knew. I'm not sure if the judge or anything knew, but yeah, the police officers knew. And then yeah, from court, I went straight with Monday to Brixton, straight away. You get me? How did you feel though, I guess, at that time? Because that, that's a, a strange dynamic to be involved in, man. Um, you're getting charged with murder and it's your mum's in the room. You know what, I'll be real, at that precise time, I wasn't even thinking about me, you get me? I was thinking about my mum, I was thinking, raw, like, you get me? Even in the court, I'm trying to get her attention. Like. Is that a Peckham thing? Peckham Roadman thing? Raw. I'm thinking, raw. What is... Like, to let her know, like, I'm good, you get me? I'm trying to remind to her, like, I'm good, but obviously she's at work, isn't it? So her face is just kind of straight and not really, you get me, so... I wasn't really thinking about me, to be honest. I was more thinking of my mum. That's the truth, if you get me. So, yeah, from court, I went remanded to Brixton. And then, yeah, that's on my journey. That's rough, like, question, like, when, like, at what point did your mom, like, she a soldier for that. She didn't break down in the court or nothing. She must have knew the life you was living already. She must have knew what type of time you was on. When it began, man. What happened? Yeah, um, Brixton, I was there for a bit. I'm not saying it was all right, but it, was, it wasn't like a, what I expected, do you get me? Actually, right, but I just want to go back a second. So when you was in the, in the courtroom, what was the conclusion of what happened there? Um, basically, the prosecution said I'd been picked out on the ID parade by a witness. So that was the evidence against me, innit? That's the only evidence that's the they only had on thing they that. needed. Obviously, that's it. So I've been picked out by a witness. She said she saw me involved in a crime. And yeah, she said I was the main aggressor. I was this, I was that. So yeah, off that evidence alone, yeah, they reminded me and charged me with the murder. And then what was next? Um, yeah, like I said, Brixton, couple of the guys was in there, you get me? Like I said, it wasn't what I expected because my first time in jail as well, you get me? So a couple of the guys was in there from Brixton, I'll say what, a couple months? They kicked me out. Hit me. They kicked me out of Brixton. Cause like I said, when I was on remand, for me that was like a fun time. You get me? Like I'm not penning, raw. Oh, this could be like my life over or anything like that. Innit? I'm thinking, yeah, I'm in jail. I'm going home. Innit? I'm innocent. Like yeah, everything was fun time for me. Get me? I was keeping up with fuckeries, have phones. Get me? Just doing what I'm doing with the guys. And yeah, like two months. This is when the riots was going on. So yeah, the riots was going on, and we even done a little riot on the wing. You get me? We done a little riot on the wing. The next day they come for me, said, "Boom, you're getting kicked out." You get me? You got five minutes to pack your stuff. There was like six of us. You got five minutes kicked to pack your stuff. You get me? You're getting shipped out straight away. 
where we, what riots were going on and why did they get You don't out? take a risk or you were keeping there. So yeah, shipped me out after that two months in Brixton. Let me. Where did you get shipped to? In Wandsworth. What was life like in Wandsworth? <laughs> yeah, Wandsworth was good still, I can't lie. Same, phones, living life, isn't it? I can't even lie. Even them times I was smoking weed, had weed on the wing. You get me? Multiple phones, like I said. I was just doing my thing, man. Basically, yeah. And then what was next for your case? Um, there was just hearings, basically, them time. My trial didn't start until, like, when did my trial start? I'll say, near ending of January, my trial started. In the first trial. Like, but he was in, you know, he was part of Peckham, too. You know, in prison, I probably, probably, like, in prison, Peckham, the name Peckham ring bells. So you probably in there with all Peckham people. At least the guys where you was, you know what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying? Like a lot of people from Peckham was probably there. So when he say I'm living life, you know, he having fun he with the guys. Lasted that, what, four weeks? It lasted four weeks, yeah. So yeah, from then to like January, it was just fun time for me, innit? I obviously had hearings like and plea hearings and all that. So yeah, man. All along them times as well, Rev, was you were in the back of your head, you, you was like, I'm, I'm going home? All the time. Well, that was always in my head, I'm going home. You get me? Because I knew I was innocent. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going home like that. You get me? There's nothing on me. Plus, the witness who picked me out, she was even drunk. You get me? She was drunk. And her description of me wasn't me. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going home, man. That's, that's not me. What description did she give? And basically, she gave a description of a tall male Six foot plus, bearing in mind I might have been six foot. Um, yeah, this one girl told me the average height in the UK for males were was um, <laughs> like five eight. That's tough. Afro hair, like a Jackson Five Afro. You know, like the Jacksons. Let me. She gave like a Jackson Five Afro. Big Afro. And yeah, and basically she even said he was kicking aggressively with his um, with his right foot, kicking the boy aggressively with his. And you left handed his right foot and doing like hand gestures or whatever she meant, yeah. And these times I'm thinking like, bro, I'm not even right footed. Like I'm left footed, you know, like predominantly I'm left footed, you know what I'm trying to say? So if someone's kicking someone or punching someone, you're going to punch them with your strongest or your strongest hand or foot, innit? So I'm thinking I'm not even right footed, like what's she talking about? You get me? So everything she was saying as well was even rubbish. So I'm thinking I'm going home, man. This is just a little, little. Drunk, being drunk, I mean, in America, if this was the, like, you would need more. Like, I'm surprised they convicted him off of this. Because normally I'd be watching and it'd be taking a lot to convict somebody in the UK. But, like, uh, even in America, I don't think this would have flew. Like, your witness is drunk. Did you have a public defender or something? That public defender wasn't trying to take no time. He wasn't on nothing. Like, what's time going on? out for me. I buy the same... Like, yo. Like, rah. <laughs> that's, what the, that's how it fit in, right? Rah. Rah, brother. How? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And then, I guess, when did you realize that you wasn't going home? What happened? Drunk is reasonable right. doubt, huh? to believe it. I said the trial was getting a bit. Because you know what, obviously the prosecution have to paint the baddest picture they can you know, about the trial, innit? So, yeah man, the trial was just, it had these ups and downs, innit? But, yeah man, they just painted me out to be like the main aggressor. He done this, he done that. And just, yeah, I knew I wasn't going home from when I had the guilty. <laughs> That's they was telling them all about your past, all about your, you know, what you was in That's the problem, man. When you go, when you go in there as a known member, they probably already got previouses on you, like that rap sheet. First time in jail, but not, definitely not first time probably uh, arrested or anything. That's not you I want going home. I guess prior to you getting your verdict, did, did you realize that things were switching the other way? No, like in what way? What like, do you mean? Like, did you realize that a guilty verdict may be coming? Um, you know what? Even like the other, my codies, other solicitors and legal team, they was even thinking I was going to get off. You get me? So I didn't expect a guilty verdict until I actually got the guilty verdict. You know what I'm trying to say? Plus, I didn't go on the stand or anything like that. You get me? I didn't go and give evidence. You get me? I had nothing really to say. Anything I did say, I already said. 
You know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, I had nothing to say in the cool room. I wasn't the there. Trial, so I just wasn't me. Him, I'm going home. And then what did the judge say and do? Um, basically, um, the jury, how long was the jury out for? I think like a few days the jury was out for. Came up, they said I got a verdict now. And then, yeah, got my guilty verdict. And then I think I got sentenced the next day. After the verdict, I got sentenced the next day. Tell me, talk to me. Dang, boy, they streamlined you. From house to court, <laughs> to in jail, remanded, to, to guilty, to, to, ver to sentencing right away, like, quick. What about your sentencing today? And how, how, what and how it took place? And basically, yeah, I got my guilty, went back to Belmarsh. And then, yeah, next day come in, what was running through your head that night, Rev? You've just been found guilty for murder. I still didn't even kick in, you know. Like, obviously it kicked in that like, raw, I got guilty for murder, but it didn't kick in that like, raw, like, I just got guilty for murder. You know what I'm trying to say? Obviously I've come back to the wing. Everyone on the wing is looking at me funny, like, like, you all right? Get me, giving me that sub look and that. I'm like, yeah, I'm good, like, raw, what's going on? Get me, just like, raw, we just seen your thing on the news. I was like, raw? Yeah, man, we just seen your thing on ITV News and that. I was like, I swear down, that like, my picture, everything. From then, it's like, raw, like, hit me. I got guilty for murder. But I'll be real, man. I was even, I slept like a baby that night. I think it's because of, let me, when you go in trial, you wake up early, you go to the um, holding room, you get searched, get me. Go to um, court, you get searched, and yeah, so I think all that tired me out anyway. Four weeks of that rubbish, you get me? So I was just knackered anyway, so I slept like a baby, <laughs> get me? Went for sentencing. Yeah, judge gave me 22 years. I think he started at like, what, 26, 27? And then he went down. I, could, I can't remember the reasons why he went down, but he went down and ended up with 22. What was the reaction in the room when he said 22? Basically, the reaction when I got guilty was worse than the reaction when I got sentenced. You know I mean? When I got my guilty, like, the victim's family, and like, they were just like, yeah, amen, and you get me, like, right in jail and all that, you get me? But I don't really penny and all of that. But um, yeah, the reaction, like, obviously, I heard sobbing and crying from my family and all of that. I'm not even gonna lie, the way he, like, described me, I probably, like, because he was innocent at the end of the day, like, he ain't even thinking about what they talking about. Like, yo, I ain't do it. So whatever you got to say, say it. But like, okay, come on. Yeah, I mean, I just looked up and just like, yeah, don't worry, man. I'm all right. You get me? Like, I'm good. Don't worry about it. You get me? Like, low-key, we should, hey, y'all, if y'all, you should play a game to this. Like, a game, you know, the little drinks, like, like this size. And if you pour something in it, it's normally like, whoa. You should play a game with those. So how many times he said you get me a rah? By the end of this video, you'll be overly old. I gotta describe it like that. <laughs> what about the other people with you who self got sentenced? What was their reactions like? Yeah, basically, obviously we all got guilty the day before, innit? it? So their reaction was a bit more emotional the day before. I think it kind of like sunk in now, innit? it? So. My, obviously, in my first child, my Cody broke down and all that. One of them, he broke down. But by the time the sentence had come, everyone was just like, yeah, this is what it is, where it is now. We've got our sentence in, and yeah, we're here. And then, when you've been sentenced, what, what did you do next? And what, what was running through your head at this time? Because when, when you've been told you're doing 22 years, what, what goes through someone's head? <sighs> you know what? That's a mad question, you know? Like I said, this is, I was just thinking, this is me now, innit? You get me? Like I said, it didn't really kick in, kick in straight away, innit? You get me? But I was just thinking, wow, I've got 22 years. But I was just still doing what I was doing from the time I got remanded. Obviously, I, had a, I calmed down a bit more, innit? Because it kind of humbled me, like, wow. But yeah, it wasn't like I was walking around depressed and soaking. Car. There's man in there that's doing 30s and 40s. You get me? And when I talk to them, it's like, wow, 22 years. Like, I'm not that bad, you get me? Like, I'll be out soon. Not soon, but yeah, like, there's man that's done like 10, 15 years and they still got more years than me to do. I'm like that, so I'm like, oh, all right, cool. And then, what was life living in prison knowing that you may be doing 22 years? Or I guess, when did you start appealing? 
Um, so for when you get sentenced, I think you got like what? I think it's 28 days. I think you got like a month or so to appeal your um, sentence and your conviction. So I imagine now I've got sentenced. My legal team's come and saw me and they're like, oh, we're not going to appeal your conviction because we don't think you got a um, case. We're going to appeal your sentence and though, to try to get you some years down. I was like, no, 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 appeal my conviction. So imagine that if I didn't tell them to appeal my conviction, I would probably wait and be sitting there right now. You get? They didn't even see. That's why you lost. Your whole team didn't even believe in themselves. Ah oh, man, you ain't even going to case. We are going to appeal a sentence. No, bro, I didn't do it. <laughs> Period. I didn't do it at all. No, go back to the drawing board. Start over. That's what I'm saying, man. If you don't fight for yourself, really nobody will. That's crazy. Get me, so they just appealed, they was just gonna appeal my sentence and trying to get me some years off, but I was like, no, nah, I wanna go for um, my conviction. Get me. And then when you appealed, what was the first steps of the process of appealing? Um, so I think they gotta send it off to the, um, so obviously they gotta write up a appeal and everything. So at the time, my QC, he's only spoke for me in court, innit? I wasn't really happy with him. I think he was a little uh, yeah, he didn't do his job properly, you get me? The one who was speaking for me, but he the one who done my actual appeal. So after he done my appeal, I sacked him, you get me? I got rid of him, so I made him do my appeal, but what he writ, he got me my conviction though, innit? I mean, my, my um, appeal, should I say. So after he done my appeal, I got rid of him because I wasn't happy with him. But basically he was saying to me that what the judge done in the case wasn't right. So basically when I got nicked, there was a knife in my pocket, in the jeans of my pocket. Get me? But obviously, I'm in my house. There was no evidence that the knife ever was brought out into the street or anything like that, which it wasn't. Right. Get me? And the judge ruled that in, in my trial as bad character evidence. Like, listen, he had the knife in his pocket. It looked like the murder weapon. And him having a knife in his pocket looks like he rolls with knives, isn't it? You get me? So. I'm in the crib. I'm at home. Couldn't they have run like DNA analysis or something? Like what? The jury to hear. So obviously when the jury seen this, they're like, raw. That's objection. If his lawyer was doing his job, I would have objected. Objection. Whoa, 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 whoa. They told the jury it looks like the murder weapon. Well, obviously the jury saw the murder weapon because police recovered that. So they're like, look, it looks like the murder weapon. It's a knife crime. Get me, these guys carry knives. So obviously you as a jury member, you're gonna think like, he's saying he's innocent, but he's got a knife. He looks like a murder weapon. Like that's automatically gonna sway your mind to someone being guilty in it. So, and obviously I won't commit no criminal offense or anything with that being in my house. Get me, so judge wasn't allowed to do that. So off that basis alone, I got my appeal. Yeah. Get me. The administration is giving 500 Um, so yeah, I've got my appeal. So basically, how the appeal works, you go through the first judge. So when the first judge, um, the single judge accepts it, it then goes into a hearing now to the next three judges. And this is in, like, in the Royal Courts of Justice. So these are like the top judges now. So you gotta have a little hearing with them and they gotta accept, got accept it basically. Um, so yeah, um, it's gone to them, but I'm on video link. These sons from Belmarsh got convicted and they shipped me to Whitemore, you get me? So I'm in Whitemore, I know my appeal's coming and then yeah, had a hearing now, but I'm on video link. So I'm just sitting there, I'm not saying nothing, I'm just sitting there watching the video link. And I think after the hearing, I think it was like, what? A month or so after, I'm not even sure. You know, it was like 10 plus years ago, but yeah. One of the screws come to me was like, oh, John. I'm like, what's going on, miss? He's like, bro, you won your appeal. Like, you're going home. You get me? I'm like, bro, swear done. I'm going home, you get me? And then they've come back to me. And they'll be like, no, no, you're not going home, but your conviction's been quashed. You get me? So. You be going back to Belmarsh in a couple of weeks or a few weeks. I'm like, bro, I swear down. Like, okay, get me. I, I was happy in it, but I wasn't getting my hopes up, up, up. 
No, I like that. And then when you got moved back to Balmarsh, well, what was the, what was life like there? Um, yeah, obviously, because I just come up from Belmarsh, isn't it? So I know how it is. It's the same, yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. It's like I was back on my man, but I was more humble this time, you get me? I weren't gassed how I was before. I was just more humble. These times, when I'm in Whitemore, so when I left Belmarsh, I wasn't a Muslim. So when I come back to Belmarsh, I'm a Muslim now. But these times, I'm proper on my deen. I'm praying, you get me? I'm learning Quran, I'm reciting. I mean, I'm learning new things every day about Islam. So these times I'll come back as like a, what can I say? Like a, like a prayer. A new man. Right, like a, on my dean basically, innit? So yeah, I'm just praying, praying. I'm just doing my Islam thing, man. Got Islam classes. I weren't really in the mix like that, you get me? And then when did, when your conviction, uh, conviction was squashed, what was the next step to getting you out? Basically my conviction was squashed. So then they sent me a retrial, but a new evidence has come up for me now, you get me? Um, one of my good, good family friends, she's even took a picture of me, I think like a couple months before the murder. So she's taken a picture of me in November and the murders happened when in January. So in November, it was one of my friends, RIP Gio, it was his birthday, in it? And they've held like a, his family's held like a party for him, you get me? And then, she took taking a picture of me of my hair. Remember I said the witness said I had like a Jackson 5 Afro and my hair was high. She's taking a picture of me and my hair was skinned. Like probably like skin like, like this to get me to bump. Oh yeah, hair don't grow that fast. Six inches a year probably, right? Six inches a year? Depending, but on average, six inches, inches a year. My whole head. You know I mean? she and that's two months before the murder. And obviously my solicitors have proved that hair grows at like, what, 1.2 centimetres a month. So my hair was even, not even higher than this on the day of the actual murder. You get me? So that was new evidence that I got in that actually get me. And then what was it a case of it went to the jury and they... Yeah, so I've had my retrial. This evidence is coming off the new picture. But even after the jury seeing this and hearing the witnesses um, statement and story, I understand. They still didn't find me not guilty, you get me? I had a hung jury, so they couldn't even decide. You get me, so... Um, what was going through your head, man? Because at that time, your, your head was... Man, that's the thing, man. Jur man, that, all that jury of your peers and whatnot, like, it's human nature to go off emotion. You know what I'm saying? So even if you go in there, like, you can't make an emotional choice. You got to listen to the facts, blah, 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 blah. Like, at the end of the day, you're still going to go off emotions. You're hearing all these people crying out like, oh, man. He did, 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 did. The facts are in your face. Bro had a skint head and a witness said it was an afro. That's not the same person, period. Be a mess, man. You've been slammed with 22 years for something you haven't done. You've then won your appeal, thinking you're going home. Then you've told, no, we have to do a retrial. And then when you have your retrial, it's a hung, it's a hung jury. Well, what's going through your head, man? These times I'm anxious, you get me? It's crazy, man. Cause I know this is my last chance. Like, if I get guilty, I'm fucked, basically. You get me? Like, if I get guilty now, I'm fucked. You get me? Regardless of the evidence. Like, the evidence is, it talks for itself. You know what I'm trying to say? So even, yeah, after the hung jury, I was like, fuck it, no, like, what's going on? You get me? You know what the worst part of the trial, I'll be real, the trial's not even the worst part. It's the waiting for your verdict. That's the worst part. You get me? Because you're sitting in the cell and you get me? You hear the jailers coming, you can hear the keys. Ksh, 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 and you're thinking, rah, they're coming to my door, they're coming to my door. When you hear the keys in your door, it's like, rah, it's time now. You get me? So it's like, you get me? So they've done that a few times, but sometimes when they come, it's like, rah, the jury will not ask a question. So it's like, oh, okay, it's not my verdict. They just want to ask a question. As in, so the jury would ask you a question? Or? No, like, they, obviously, when the jury are deliberating between themselves, they can obviously come back to the court courtroom, bring you up and ask questions to the judge. So anything that they're not just um, agreeing on or they wanna like, you know, clarify, they can ask the judge, is this, this and this, that, and the judge will be like, yes. Can you remember yeah. the questions that they'll ask me in your case in particular? Whoa, 
What are you doing here? Think of me as like your hairy godfather. I'm here to help you get your hair back because you need a little more grass on the playing field. Let's go. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Spence. I know my... Um, one of the questions was um, about my mugshot. Because obviously I had a picture of my, um, what my family friend took and then had my mugshot picture in the station when I got nicked and then I took a next picture for my ID parade. So they was asking what was the months between, because my hair was growing in it. By then I hadn't cut my hair. So they was asking the months or the, um, the months in between, between the, between the pictures. But that's not something they wanted to know. I can't remember what the actual question was, but yeah, they wanted to know something like that. You get me? And then, so the first one was a hung jury, and then what happened, I guess, the second time around? Um, had a hung jury. Did, did as well, if don't mind me asking you, do they have to give you justification why, they've, why, why it is a hung jury, and why some people have said they believe you are, and some people believe you aren't? No, no, they don't tell you that. They just say... It's just a hung jury? Yeah, not everyone come to a... I think you have to get 10 to 2, basically, in it. That's if 10 people say guilty, you're guilty. You get me? If 10 people say not guilty, you're going home, innit? So it's a majority of the verdict. On your hung jury, can you remember what the split was? No, I can't. Definitely not. But obviously I didn't get 10 people saying, you know what I'm trying to say, so, yeah. And then, so you've gone back now for the, is this almost the, the third trial? Yeah, third trial. So after the, um, I think the retrial was in May. So my retrial, and then the third trial was in like June or something like that. Get me, so I've gone back for a third trial now. You get me? And same process all over again. You get me? That gotta be taxing emotionally, especially if you know you didn't do it. The guy's friends have come caught. Um, the same witness who picked me out, she's come caught a third time. You get me? Same story. Obviously, I'm, I, got, I know the case off by heart now. I know what they're gonna say. I know everything. So nothing's a shock to me. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, they've come caught. Um, and even the judge, so imagine that. I just thought, yeah, this is a stitch up, man. You get me? Like, they're trying to stitch me up, because even the judge, basically, um, someone who was a suspect in my case, someone who was a suspect in my case, they got NFA, basically, it? They got NFA, but they was on the next murder case. You get me? And, but obviously, we're all, they all linked us together, and he got guilty, he just got 21 years, but the judge who gave him 21 years, was my judge now, you get me? One judge called Wendy Joseph, you get me? Look her up, she's even, know that birds, they heard the birds of the feather, that program, yeah, she's even one of their sisters or something like that, you get me? So she's, um, she's um, some reason asked for all the um, mugshots from the ID parade, you get me? So she's looking at the mugshots and all the suspects that were involved and she was like, I know that face, you get me? She was like, I just sentenced him to blah, 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 you get me? And then she's looking at me now, looking at the mugshot. So she's thinking, raw, like, these guys are a bit, you know what I'm trying to say? Dodgy. Well, obviously, the law is the law, innit? Like, she, um, my team went for a halfway dismissal now. And yeah, she has to come back and throw out my case. You get me? She said the woman basically was wrong, innit? Like, that couldn't have been the defendant who she described because he's here. When you're hearing this, when they, these, when she's saying these words, what's going through your head, man? That's that that. <laughs> they just be looking for a conviction at the end of the day, but that 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 at the, like, they want a W. But that, the hair thing it just seems so obvious. You know what I'm saying? If my hair was bald two months before and they said he had a Jackson 5 Afro. I know y'all know what a Jackson 5 Afro is, bro. Like, come on, bro. This takes longer than two months to grow. So that's not a Jackson 5, so think about it. Basically, I'll be real. When she's reading it out, like, basically, yeah, like, this can't be the defendant because his hair was no way near um, a Jackson 5 Afro and the woman who picked- And he's not six feet. <laughs> Yeah, she was like, yeah, I'm certain it was him because of his hair. Like, that's how, she, how certain she was because she remembers the afro. You get me? But in, even when the judge is um, talking what she's talking now, 
one of my QCs, um, Leon Kazakos, he's a bad boy still. You get me? He's putting the work for me. He's like, turn around to me, you get me? And it's like, he's mime to me. We won. You get me? I'm like, rah, like, swear down, you get me? Like, I'm happy, but I'm not like, I'm just still composed, you get me? Still composed and just reading it, reading it out. And then she just like, yeah. I dismissed this case, man. I'm throwing it out, basically. You get me? Um, what, what, I guess, what, what, how did you feel, man? That must have been a, a crazy feeling to find out that you was bad. Justice for the member. To do 22 years, and now you're, pretend, but no, now you're going home? Well, that's a salute, man. That's a salutable, you know what I'm saying? Like, justice will serve, man. In this case, it wasn't him. Hey. Now, you know, it was a crazy feeling, but obviously, um, the prosecution got 48 hours to um, appeal it. They got 48 hours to appeal it, and they went to go for a fourth trial because they weren't having it. They didn't want to let me go, basically. That's innit? what I'm saying. The prosecution, they just want that W. They're not even thinking about, like, dang, did we get the wrong man? The wrong man is still walking, the, the, the real guy is still walking the streets? Like, they think we got to get somebody. Yeah, I mean, they don't. They didn't want to let me go, so they had forty-eight hours to um, appeal it, basically. So, but the, what they're trying to say to me is that, raw, you're going back to Belmarsh until the prosecution appeal this case and try to get a full free trial. You get me? I feel so like I they should, to put me on. I feel like if I should go, if I won the mistrial, if I won and it was thrown out and they got forty-eight hours, I should be free until they get the right evidence. That's how I feel. Because I'm going to be locked up if, until, if I lose. So if I've won, all right, go, go do y'all due diligence. But I need to be free until then. <laughs> Fourth trial now, you get me? And what were you thinking or saying at this stage? I'll just be real, man. I'll just think, post yours. <laughs> you get me? I think, mm. post yours. Like, what? <laughs> like, allow me now, you get me? Like, let me go now. You know I'm trying to say? Yeah, but they weren't happy at all, man. So I'm in, um, I'm in the cell, going back to Belmarsh. Got in a circle van, yeah, and they put me in a circle van and boom, one of the jigglers just ran out. I can't remember. She said, yeah, banging on the door, banging on the door. She come out, rah, come here, Mr. John. So I was like, rah, what's going on? And one of my brethren is like, rah, you're going home, you know, you get me? So they take me back out of the circle van, pull me back up to court. And they're like, yeah, they're not going to proceed with a fourth trial, you get me? But I think that was the, um, the family's doing, so you get me? I don't think they could go through no more, you get me? So, yeah, that's true. Like, every trial, the family got to relive the whole thing. It's like, no. I was like, well, we're not going to proceed with a fourth trial, but you have to go back to Belmarsh and come back to call next morning so we can tell the jury that you're going home, basically, you get me? And I think the forum of the jury, I think that's what they call them, he had to even stand up and say, not guilty. You get me? So I went to um, Belmarsh and the next day come back to court. You get me? And then you went back to court? Yeah, I went back to court the next day for the judge to tell the um, jury what had happened. And then, yeah, release me. And then what was life like the first day? First day? I don't know. I'll just be real. I was like a big kid on the first day. I was Hey, first day out, even if I'm not a rapper, I'm dropping the coldest song. At this point, after all I just went through, I'm, I gotta drop something. I got a black cab back from the old Bailey's all the way back to Peckham, get me? Just looking at the window, you know, like that. Just looking at the window like a big kid. I was just thinking, rah, I'm home. First thing I done, what did I do? I had a bath. I remember that, you know why? Cause in jail, there's no baths, there's just showers. I was showering for two years straight, you get me? So I come home and had a bath, you get me? And obviously in jail, obviously when you shower, you keep your boxes on. You know what I'm trying to say? You obviously, but even when I got in the bath, I had my boxes on, like I was still in jail mode. <laughs> you get me? I had my boxes on, I'm thinking like, bro, you get me? But yeah, that's the first thing I done. I had like a two hour bath, I swear to God. Rev, what would you say was the worst experience in those two years? Worst, worst memory? Worst memory. Just getting my guilty. That was the worst memory. Um, even nothing to do with even jail though. Like obviously I got a few bad news when I was in jail. Like my knees passing, 
never even met her before. You get me, but I really enjoy. I had some good times, man. Met some good people. That's crazy. That's a UK prison talking. Man, I had a good time in there. Hey, man, I ain't even got no bad memories about jail. It was cool. We was chilling, playing PS5 in that joint. We was shooting dice. It was, hey, it was, we was eating up my team, you know? <laughs> Steak. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I was living free in there, basically. You know that, that, um... Were you still gang affiliated when you was released and after two years? I was gang affiliated. Obviously, I spoke to the people from the area. Yeah, I picked up on people from the area, but nothing I was involved in that would get me land me back in jail like that. Was that was that the, I guess the last time you I guess dived into that world or was a part of associating with anyone in that world? No, obviously I still keep in contact with people, innit? it? But I'll be real when I came home. A reality woke me up. I remember I came home, I was like two weeks home. You get me? I think, yeah, like two, three weeks home. You get me? I'm walking through one of the estates now called Yellow Brick. You know what I mean? Yellow Brick, me and my brethren, it was just walking, walking. And obviously, like, for like guys on the road, innit? When you're walking, like, every five, six seconds, you, know, you have to take a look behind your shoulder, innit? That's just normal, innit? When you walk, you just take a look behind your shoulder, just you never know. Well, we'll... Every five, six seconds is a stretch, man. I was in Iraq, I'm on a swivel. At all times. Well, one second. Then walking. Taking a look behind my shoulder, yeah, cool. Walking, walking. I heard one of my brethren say, oh shit, he get me. And he's get me. And then I've looked behind, seen someone with like a firearm. You get me? No closer than how me you are. You're probably a bit further back. Aiming at my head, do you get me? Imagine that. It's jammed on my head. You know, like that, jammed on me. Not surprised. Not surprised that jam. And obviously. Salute. Congrats. Good luck. That's luck. That's God for you. Or whoever you believe in. I had to do you saying, Bo, hit me. In and out. Get what? me. What? Out of nowhere. Out of, yeah, out of nowhere. Imagine that. Now, that's how it be. I was like, fuck, imagine that. Like, that's the reality you woke me up. You get me? Because I was just jail, not giving off care in the world. I'm out of jail, just... But that woke me up. Like, right, I'm back in the trenches. You get me? Like, I'm back in the trenches. So imagine that someone... Someone basically it, tried to kill you in the gun with jail. You imagine that? So I'd have been, like, fresh home. Basically, I was fresh home from a 22-year sentence, and I'd have been dead, you know, like that. So I was better off staying in jail then, you know, like that. So yeah, man, that kind of woke me up as well. Yeah, Did you ever find that like, why or who? Or nah, what? nah, probably mistaken identity or something like that, you get me? Is but, that in the middle of the street? Yeah, in one of the estates, Yellow Brick, innit? Obviously, I'd never known we'd done it. Or nothing, but that was just so random. I don't know nothing, but imagine that. It just clicked on my head. And you know what was the worst thing? He's either um, he's unjammed it or had it on safety, whatever, because I've done the Usain Bolt now, get me, and then literally, no word of a lie, wallahi, like 10, 15 seconds later, I've heard bang. So he's probably unjammed it or had it on safety and tested it and it's banged off. So yeah, I was just thinking, imagine that mm -mm, if he was like a proper whoever he was, if he was proper, I would even be here today, you know, like that. So yeah, that woke me up. I like how you phrased that, if he was proper. That was like a reality check, like, right, you're back in the trenches, like, get me last real. And um, Rick, what would you say is the worst memory or the worst thing you've seen in the whole of your life? Yeah, a lot of things, man. It's things I can't even say on camera, but I see yeah, a lot of things still. Is there anything that you can say on camera one of the worst things you've ever seen? No, oh, just, just normal oh. hood shit, man. Just... What is the worst memory of your life, opposed to, opposed to what you've seen? The uh, worst memory of my life? My friend's passing, isn't it? Basically, one of my one of my good friends, Ruth. Again, we call her Ruthless. Obviously, we was just what was it? We was at Wolf Road, Ellsbury. It was like Wolf Road, as Ellsbury Estate, and it was all together. And I heard that literally just left her. Like, literally, me and my next president, we just left her. And I say that like, five ten minutes later, we got the call that she passed away. So that was kind of like. 
one of my worst, not even kind of, that I probably just some of my worst memory in the, yeah. Best memory. Oh, I can answer that. Surely you should be Coming home, home innit? <laughs> no, but obviously, yeah, of course, but my, yeah. Well, best memory in the hood or in my life, though? In your life? My kids, man. And taking my shahada, my best memory still. Yeah, the kids always do it, I'm telling you, man. I guess people grow up, I guess, almost living that kind of lifestyle now. Obviously, I know how it goes, innit? I can easily say, ah, oh, it's not worth it, but once you're in deep, you're in deep, innit? It's hard to come out. You know I mean? Like, for someone like me, I can say, like, right, I'm not in this hood shit no more, and I don't want nothing to do with it, but there's people who still hold grudges, you know what I'm trying to say? So, you can never be too complacent, man. That's what I say, but obviously, it's not worth it, innit? Everyone I met in jail doing life sentences wanted to come home. You get know I me? Mean? There's not one person that said, to my knowledge, anyway, that said, like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm riding this 30. Like, I don't give a Facts. shit. Like, everyone wanted literally to come home, you get me? There was a man in jail that I met. Even big up um, Kane, man. You get me? He's from, from Kensal Green. He's like an older, older guy to me, you get me? He was proper, I looked after me and that. Him and Craver. Imagine they even said to me, like, right, if you even come back here, don't even chat to me. You get me? They even said that straight. Like, if you come back here, don't chat to me. You get me? Like, you got a chance to go home. Like, you get me? So, even on that yeah, you, sense, man, you get me? I do this. Yeah, you had a crazy second chance. Even, even though you shouldn't have been there in the first place, you get that chance is wild. So, you go back, man, you throwing that all away, man. Tell leave a like, comment. Let me know what y'all think. I'm gone. Taboo room.